Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Alan with Roadway Striping Inc. I wanted to do a walkthrough on a Line Laser 5900 today, kind of explain all the components and how they work together. The first component we're going to discuss here is the display panel. We're going to go over the functions of these different switches. Down here in the bottom left hand corner we have our pressure switch. All the way to the left is 0 PSI and then all the way to the right is a maximum pressure there. So we adjust that according to the pressure that we need for what we're spraying. This right here is the pump switch. Down is off and up is on. This switch right here is for auxiliary connections like if you have lights hooked up to the machine or another sort of accessory you can wire it up to this switch and have control of it from your panel. This is your engine speed or your throttle control. This has a cable that runs down to the engine uh, so you can control your engine throttle from up here. Lastly here is your cutoff switch. This so you can kill the engine without having to manually flip the on off switch on the engine itself. This is a display panel here that you can cycle through and it'll show you things like how many gallons of paint you've ran, how many miles the machine has pushed, things of that nature. On the majority of our machines these displays don't work anymore. It also displays current pump pressure. Moving on from the display, here we have our filter housing. Inside of this filter housing, if you take this off and pull it out, there's a coin filter that runs the length of this housing here. Um, and that's just used to filter out fine particulate uh, from making it to your spray gun, uh, keep you from getting tip clogs and such. On the bottom of the filter housing you have your priming valve. Currently it's in the closed position which allows the machine to build up pressure. Uh, if I was to release that lever and point it downwards, it will relieve the pressure in the lines uh, back through this return line here. It runs back up into the tank. Moving down from that filter housing here, we have our gun holder. This holds your spray gun so you can set it up to spray 4 inch, 6 inch, 12 inch, uh, whatever kind of lines, whatever width lines you need. Um, but you can adjust the height here. With this connection you can loosen it and raise it up and down on this bar to raise and lower your gun uh, to adjust the width of your line. This black knob here is what tightens into the gun handle and holds the gun securely in place. This armature here on the bottom is what controls uh, your gun whenever you squeeze the trigger up on the handle up here. It will actuate this handle here and uh, squeeze the trigger uh, on your gun. Attached to the engine on this machine is your pump housing. I have a video on repacking these pumps if you have any questions on how those operate. Uh, but it just utilizes the suction tube to pull paint out of the paint bucket into the bottom of the pump. Once it goes through the pump, it goes through that supply line there and it runs up into the filter housing where it filters the paint. And then if the priming valve is open, it'll run back down that hose and back into the bucket. If you have your priming valve closed, it'll run out of your gun hose and actually supply pressure to your gun. In front of the pump housing here is another gun mount on this machine. Some machines only have a forward facing mount. This one has both a rear mount and a forward facing mount. So if you wanted your gun to be out front, if you're painting stalls or painting in between parking bumpers and things of that nature, you could mount your gun up front here uh, to make sure you make it all the way to the end of the line. We utilize the back gun here for long straight lines and for radiuses. Moving around the front of the machine here, we have our front caster wheel. This front caster wheel has a locking mechanism that allows you to unlock the wheel from the handlebars. If you pull on what would be the left hand trigger up there, it will pull back on that locking mechanism and unlock the caster wheel and allow it to turn freely. Underneath the front of this caster wheel is an adjustment nut. This guy right here. So if you're pushing your machine and it's tracking to the left or to the right, you can loosen that bolt there and push it until you get it tracking straight and then you can tighten that bolt and it'll lock that caster wheel in place to where all of your lines are pushing straight. Up here on the side of this caster wheel, we just talked about 
the unlocking mechanism that lets you freely rotate this caster wheel. But on the other side here, there's this knob, this little screw knob, this handle sticking out of the side of the caster wheel. You can unlock your caster wheel and get it turned to whatever radius you want to try it. Say you wanted to paint a big circle. You can actually turn this caster wheel and then tighten this knob right here and set that caster wheel locked in a radius position. And then you can push the machine in a perfect circle. That way you can stripe a perfect radius without it jerking or without you holding the caster wheel the whole time trying to make sure it stays at the perfect angle to, pri to stripe a perfect radius. You can actually lock that caster wheel in place with this knob to ensure that you get a perfectly smooth radius. Working our way around the machine here, we have a Honda engine. Um, you have a couple levers here. This upper lever right here is your choke and this is your fuel cutoff switch. The fuel pushed all the way to the right is on and the choke all the way to the left is choke engaged and this is choke off. So choke on, choke off. Anytime we're starting these machines uh, in the morning, say it's our first start of the day, we're going to make sure that this power switch right here is turned to the on position. So that is off and this is on. We're going to set our choke to full choke. We're going to pull this handle until we get tension on it. Make sure we're on a compression stroke and then you're going to pull that one good pull and it should start. We're going to let it idle for a couple of seconds as it starts to warm up and then we can turn the choke to the off position and this engine will run uh, for the rest of the day as long as you keep fuel in it. As we move back from the engine, we have our rear wheel lock here. This armature, when pressed against the tire, locks the machine in place so you cannot roll it forwards or backwards. That's good uh, for when you're not using the machine, you want to set that lock so it doesn't go rolling across the parking lot. Uh, without anybody managing it. This is that handle that I was talking about for the front caster. When you squeeze this handle like that, that front caster wheel will unlock and rotate. And then when you let go of the handle and rotate it back into the forward position, it locks in place. The last component here that we have is our spray gun. Some models come with two guns. Um, this one specifically I only have set up for one gun. I use this machine for our red paint, typically striping long, uh, striping long fire lane lines. Um, but this other fitting right here that's into the filter housing, uh, you can remove that fitting and put a small gun with like a whip hose. Uh, if you needed to run an additional hose to do stencil work with, or if you needed to stripe double yellow, you could run two guns simultaneously uh, and set it up with two gun holders. Um, this trigger assembly up here that we utilize to spray with has two fittings here so you could run two gun cables to this trigger so when you pull this trigger it would actuate both guns at the same time this is that trigger that I was talking about when I squeeze it you see it moves that armature and that's what squeezes the trigger on your gun it has adjustments up here on the handlebar itself where you can tighten the trigger pull uh, some people don't like it to spray until you're all the way at full close. Some people want it to spray immediately as soon as you pull on it. So you can use these there, those, those adjusting nuts there, and to adjust the sens sensitivity of your trigger pull. Now that we have a basic understanding of the parts and pieces of this line laser, um, I want to discuss safety when working on these machines. Um, the first thing I do any time that I'm planning on setting up a machine at the beginning of the day is I turn my pump pressure all the way to zero and I turn my pump off. After I have that done, I'll come over here to this release valve and I'll use one hand to hold on to the priming line. Okay, I'll hold on to it with this hand while I simultaneously relieve the pressure using this priming switch. If you just walk up to a machine that's under pressure and you flip this switch to the open position, say this machine, uh, you're, say you're out on a job and you just finished painting a bunch of lines and it's set at 1400 PSI. 
If you break this pressure release valve, this priming valve open when it's under that much pressure, this priming line here that's tucked into the bucket will blow out of the bucket. I've seen it happen a dozen times. It'll blow out of the bucket and throw paint all over the ceiling, all over the wall, all over the parking lot that you're striping on. So anytime you're going to relieve pressure, hold this priming valve with your left hand while simultaneously holding this priming line down here with your right hand to make sure it doesn't blow out of the bucket and cause a mess or worse yet, uh, injure somebody. The same thing goes for the gun. I always tell all of our employees, treat these spray guns as if it's a loaded gun. This machine is typically stored under pressure. Even when it's at the shop, we keep them under low PSI to prevent air pockets from forming in the lines. So if you were to run up to this machine and squeeze that trigger, even though the machine hasn't been running, or maybe it hasn't even been used for the day, when you squeeze that trigger, it's going to shoot paint out of the tip of that gun. So don't ever point it at yourself or at others. Always treat it as if it's under a significant amount of pressure. If you're on a job site and you've been striping all day and you have this machine maybe not running but parked on the side of the parking lot, it's probably still stored under the same amount of pressure that you use to spray with, which could be anywhere from 1100 PSI to 1400 PSI. I've seen some of our machines run at 1800 PSI. So just be really careful. If you were to squeeze that trigger while that gun was aimed at, say, your arm or your hand, it can blow paint under your skin. You have subdermal paint and they have to scrape that out at the hospital. You'd have to go to the emergency room and they'd have to get all those paint solids out from underneath your skin. It's a real big mess and it's incredibly painful and costly. So be real careful when you're using these guns or you're working, working around these machines. Uh, treat them as if they're under pressure uh, because it only takes one small mistake to blow paint underneath your skin and then you have a world of problems. So that was a very basic walkthrough of how the individual components on this machine work. I will be doing more in-depth videos breaking down each individual function uh, as I have time to get a little bit more in-depth on functionality and fine-tuning adjustments, making this machine uh, work for you and making you more productive in the field. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks, guys.